Government corruption has never been more prevalent or caused more harm. It's why extremism is on the rise. It's why the financial gap between the haves and have nots has never been wider. And it's why our planet is at risk of an extinction level tragedy. That's why I need your help to keep exposing the truth about the rot on both sides of the aisle. Become a supporter or a friend of the show today by clicking on the coffee link in the description box below. Friends of the show, join me on a Zoom hangout once a month, and you guys can ask me any questions you want, and I can get to know you better. But the most important reason to help is to keep the show alive. Together, we can and will save our country and our planet. Thanks in advance and enjoy the show. Hey everyone, welcome to Plants and Politics. So today's hearing was pretty shocking. Um, the overall theme was exactly how and who Trump pressured at the Department of Justice to help him turn over the election. And today was clearly Jeffrey Clark's turn in the barrel. You know, the other day it was John Eastman. Today it's Jeff Clark. I think it's safe to say his legal career is over. But the biggest bombshells that were dropped today by far were the names of sitting members of Congress who asked Donald Trump for preemptive pardons. So I'll get to that in a minute. But first, let's talk about the top line theme. Um, as you guys probably know, there were letters that were drafted erroneously telling several states that the DOJ was investigating election irregularities and that their state should decertify the election results. And we also know those letters were being pushed and advocated for by the assistant attorney general for the Environment and Natural Resources Division of the Justice Department, that is Jeffrey Clark. But what we found out today is that an attorney named Ken Klukowski actually worked with Clark and attorney John Eastman in drafting those letters. So this Klukowski guy is a totally new player, somebody we've never heard of before. Um, we also now know that the original draft of that letter contained the names of Trump's acting AG and deputy AG, uh, Jeffrey Rosen and Richard Donahue. However, they were in-person witnesses today, and they vehemently opposed sending those letters out. In addition, Trump's White House counsel and other advisors to Trump also opposed the sending of those letters, and they told him that the letters represented a, quote, suicide pact. They said it would destroy everyone who signed them. It would destroy Trump's presidency. It would destroy the country and democracy. And we also heard today how Clark was repeatedly ordered by his superiors, those two men I just mentioned, Donahue and Rosen, they ordered him, as well as others ordered him, to stand down. They said, stop talking to Trump about this, these letters, stop talking to him about election fraud. And he promised that he would, but then he continued to talk to Trump in secrecy. In fact, Richard Donahue testified today that Clark started conducting his own investigation this was outside of the DOJ's purview. This was without their knowledge. He started conducting interviews. Um, in addition to all of that, we also discovered how Clark became involved in this whole thing, because again, he was an, an environmental attorney. So he had nothing whatsoever to do with the election system or even criminal justice. So we now know that Congressman Scott Perry is the one who introduced Trump to Clark. This was on December 22nd. And then Perry was working very hard behind the scenes to try to get Clark installed as the attorney general after Bill Barr left. Congressman Perry actually texted Trump's chief of staff, Mark Meadows, numerous times. He kept trying to discuss Clark with him. We also learned that Congressman Perry communicated on at least one occasion with Meadows via Signal. That's the encrypted messaging app. So that's not suspicious at all, right? He's texting him and emailing him all of this other stuff. But for some reason, he decides that that one communication required more secrecy with Trump's chief of staff. And then after Perry kept pressuring Meadows, Meadows then also was making moves to try to involve this environmental attorney, this Jeff Clark guy in Trump's election scheme. Um, in fact, Meadows ordered the acting Attorney General Rosen 
to send Clark to Georgia to investigate ballot irregularities. So keep in mind, Rosen is Clark's boss. He is his direct superior. And Meadows is just going around him almost and saying, oh, yeah, I want this other guy in this other department within the DOJ to go check out election irregularities that didn't exist, by the way. And this is all backed up. There was testimony either in person or via deposition. This was all done under oath. There were also text messages and email messages that they showed. So this is not like their word against these other people. We also heard directly from Rosen and Donahue about how Trump pressured them like relentlessly to try to find election fraud, even though they said they repeatedly explained to him why each one of these conspiracy theories was incorrect. They would go through the list and explain, yeah, we've already investigated that. Here's why it's wrong. Here's what really happened. Um, At one point, Trump offered Jeff Clark Rosen's position. He offered to install Jeff Clark as the acting AG, as he was being pushed to do. And Clark went to Rosen and said, hey, this is what Trump is offering to do. I'll turn it down if you'll agree to send these fraudulent letters. He didn't use the word fraudulent, but he said, if you'll agree to send these letters to Georgia and other states, I'll tell Trump I don't want the job and you can stay. So Rosen, of course, declined because he didn't want any part of this. And um, Richard Donahue, the acting deputy AG, also testified today that Trump told him to, quote, just say the election was corrupt and leave the rest to me and the Republicans. So think about this. They were over and over and over again telling Trump the election wasn't stolen. We've looked at all of these issues. We've looked at all of these allegations. We have disproven them. None of them have panned out. None of them are legit. And he went out there on January 6th and continued to push these lies. On the day of the attack, he whipped up that crowd knowing that he was lying. 